Okay, so my name's Cole because you guys all know that because you're following me on Facebook. I wanted to take a minute before I head home from the Lockport World War II event this weekend not to put my feelings aside but to actually say what I've been thinking for probably about five years and it came up again in conversation both at Conneaut here, I know I'm going to hear about it in two weeks at Rockford. Basically, why can't we hold women to the same authenticity standards that we hold men in reenacting? Um, this comes up at World War II all the time, um, to the point where this weekend I actually heard someone say, we can't tell a woman when she's not doing something, when she is doing something that's not authentic. And I wondered why. I, I started to think about the men um, and what would happen if we told a man, you can't do that. Uh, if we were addressing a safety issue and we said, you can't do that, and they weren't willing to make a change, we would tell them, go home. But when we look at female reenactors, we turn a blind eye. We let them wear pretty much whatever we want as long as it looks cute or is vaguely authentic. If she's in a skirt and heels, that's fine. And this bothers me, maybe because I am striving to be as close to historically accurate as possible, um, but it bothers me for a couple other reasons too. Um, it bothers me because we're not doing these new female reenactors any service. We're not introducing them to the hobby and saying, look, here are the standards. If you can meet them, then this is a great hobby for you. If you can't, we can help you. And if you don't want to meet the standards, there are plenty of other things you can do. If all you want to do is run around with great hair, pretty makeup, and have people take your picture, go do pinup. If you want to take your clothes off and you want to wear vintage clothes and take them off, do burlesque. There's plenty of other things that you could be doing if you don't want to strive for the same level of authenticity that everyone else at the event is aiming for. Um, I think we're doing the male reenactors a disservice by allowing female reenactors not to have the same level of standard because you know the guys are out there. They're sweating and schlepping and tr spending their hard-earned money on all of this authentic stuff. They're getting the haircuts, shaving off their facial hair, making those sacrifices. And then we take half the reenacting re population and we don't care what they do. That's not fair to the people who are holding up those standards. I think we're not doing any service to the women who were actually in World War II. We're dressing up Hollywood and glamorizing what was a tough time for a lot of them. And by not holding female reenactors to a higher authenticity standard equal to that of the men, we're saying what the women in World War II did doesn't matter as much as the men. And that's just blatantly not true. We're not doing any service, of course, to the men from World War II who died for those women and many of them probably had those girls on their minds at the last minute. So, and we're not doing the public any service because we're showing them Hollywood. We're not showing them anything but G.I. Joe in his green uniform looking perfect and his pinup girlfriend. Well, that's not really what the 1940s looked like either in America or in Europe. And the public's getting a screwed up version of what history looks like that they could get on the silver screen. They're coming to us because they need to see real history, not Hollywood. So this begs the question, how do we fix this? How do we raise women up to be equal authenticity wise with the men? And I've sort of outlined a little plan. I had some time while I was here. I didn't type it on the typewriters that I was fixing, but I probably should have. Um, we need to start by having events have written standards for women, for European civilians, American civilians, for 
every women's branch in every military, whether they're auxiliaries, whether they're serving with the men or not. We need to have standards, and those standards need to be realistic and attainable for all reenactors. We've got them for the men, we need to have them for the women. But more importantly, women reenactors need to be writing them. I love you guys, but you don't put on the girdle, you don't know what it feels like. Just like I wouldn't tell you what buttons go on your M43 jacket for this unit in this battle, don't expect to know what we wear, ask us. Because there are good, authentic, dedicated, research-based historians out there that know this stuff and want to be contributing to events. Um, second would be involving all women in safety and authenticity. I know at the Rockford event we've been pushing for that and we're seeing it coming into a lot of the smaller events now, but that needs to be the standard for all World War II events. How can you expect us to be authentic if we're not being treated the same way as the men, if we're not going through the same certification authenticity standards every morning. Um, next, of course, goes along with the first point. We can't just have those standards. We have to have female authenticity officers, people that know the standards and can enforce them. We'll go to SNA and we'll help those girls and point out where they need to change and help them change so that they can meet the standards. Um, Going along with that, we need the male authenticity officers to support the female authenticity officers when they make a judgment call. We can't have second guessing of each other. We have to know that the people we're calling on to know the history, know it, and we have to support them in that. Um, finally, we've been doing a lot of these things in the smaller scale having Facebook groups, sharing the authenticity standards, sharing the pictures and, and all the information that we can ahead of time, encouraging men that are bringing girlfriends or daughters or wives to events to give those girls to us. Send them our way so that we can help them ahead of time. Don't just drop them off at the cafe or a camp and say, here's girlfriend daycare, I'm gonna be in the battle, and let them flounder. You wouldn't do that to the one of the guys in your unit, you can't do that to the women in reenacting either. Um, and finally, we can't be afraid to say no. We can't look at a girl and, and be afraid to say, honey, that's not appropriate, that's not historically accurate, you're not gonna be comfortable in it, it doesn't fit the authenticity standards for the event. And the worst thing that's going to happen is she's going to leave. She's going to realize this isn't a hobby for her. Boo-hoo. It happens with the men all the time. If you're not willing to meet the standards that we set for events, this isn't the hobby for you. I know that's harsh. There are tons of hobbies out there. Not everyone needs to reenact. There are other ways that you can love history and not dress funny and sweat your ass off or freeze. Um, so that's my quick thoughts before I head home from the weekend. This is going to be replayed because I see that Nikki's the only one watching. <laughs> so if you see it on the replay and you agree with me, you have thoughts on this, even if you hate it and you hate me because you think I'm a colossal bitch for telling people they can't wear those shoes, let me know, spread it around to your friends. I think we really can do something and we don't have to have this defeatist attitude about female authenticity in reenacting.